Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is a video covering the official patch notes for Apex Legends Season 21. Everything's going to be linked in the description down below. I'm just excited to be here and cover it all for you. So the trailer will be in the description, the blog post will be in the description, these patch notes. You can follow along as we cover them, or you can watch the video, or you can just not watch the video and you have everything at your disposal. Either way, we'll do our best to kind of timestamp stuff here, the trailer as well will be able to highlight as as well. So I apologize. First off, I'm going to stutter and stammer probably quite a bit in this video because first off, you probably hear my from my voice. Who here stayed up last night and watched Apex Legends Global Series? I sure did. I am a little tired, but I had an absolute blast watching it. That was insane. And the amount of people watching and supporting, I assume that a lot of you guys saw it. If you didn't, definitely recommend going and check it out and see which teams won and which teams didn't. I mean, it was it was crazy. It was absolutely insane. So now let's just jump right into it. We already covered Alter and produced a in-depth guide for Alter in general, but let's go to read her abilities and just kind of remind you what they are and put a card in the upper right-hand corner if you want to check out more in-depth details. My biggest note and my biggest tip about Alter is that spending time on her is going to be a bigger reward. I think initially people are going to find her maybe underwhelming, but I think her pick rate is going to be astronomical and the better you know the map and use her abilities, the stronger that Alter is going to be. So map knowledge is going to be of the most essence and also those players who play really aggressive. Now let's cover the abilities just verbally here. A gift from the rift is very much like a Loba ultimate, but you can only grab one item and you cannot grab a shield core. So that's the passive ability. The tactical is void passage. It creates a portal passageway through a surface. So this is what we're talking about. And you can check out the full guide again, where you put one entry point to another and it's really really strong and very effective in getting your team because it's a team based wide ability and has a lot of strengths to it the ultimate ability is the void nexus which it creates a regroup point from one point back to another everyone can take it back once it has over 200 meters it also can be used if you're knocked so it's a great reset point it's kind of like a reverse or i guess not really a reverse revenant ultimate but a improved revenant ultimate i guess you could say because you don't have to wait until you get eliminated. You can just choose when you go back rather than a timer. So really, really strong across the board. And let's talk about the upgrades here. Nothing's changed from the upgrades when we talked about it in the guide and video. You can either choose to reduce the ultimate cooldown by 30 seconds, or you can extend highlights and see enemy health bars after exiting the tactical. I think this one's really, really strong, especially whenever you're breaching as a team. I don't know if this applies team-wide. I still don't know that because I played solos extensively with alter now the level three upgrade options is the external nexus avoid nexus no longer times out so have it up forever now you could destroy it at a distance keep that in mind 120 seconds is a long time also to keep in mind you may not need it for that long by that point it seems like a fight probably would have lasted too long i may be inclined to go with a tactical cooldown reduced by 10 seconds so that's really really insane those are just some of my quick notes now solos is taking over this is a limited time mode, technically. It's taking over duos from May 7th to June 24th. And we're gonna cover some of how Solos works. It's later down below. And I also have a full video on it, so you can check out that video as well. Now the map rotation, this one's actually pretty good because I forgot to take note of this. The maps for pubs and rank for the first half of the season are gonna be Broken Moon, makes sense because the map changes, Kings Canyon, and World's Edge. Now, Broken Moon map update, we covered this as well. We're gonna go and click on it though. There's a lot of changes that happen with, where did it take us? There we go. I had to scroll down just a little bit. So the Broken Moon map update, you can see just visually here, Promenade completely changed. And we talked about that in the video. Breaker Wharf as well. Some solid changes, kind of opening the map up a lot more. The spaceport really shaved down the north side of the POI really cut it down, but there's some good rotations here on the left. And so you don't necessarily get stuck, but there's a lot of height elevation. I think Spaceport, in my opinion, is probably one of the weak, weaker POIs though. Cliffside as well, massive adjustments to this POI because Promenade's gone. There's a lot of loot in this area, okay? If you go watch my video, you're gonna see like my reaction. There's a ton of loot and it's, a, it's amazing. Solar pods, also a really good quality of life change in the buildings. You'll notice that the buildings are also new. There's zip lines in the middle. So if you happen to be a movement player, and if you want to avoid movement players, you'll know that that zip line goes right down from the bottom all the way to the top. So really, really interesting. Underpass as well. You'll notice that you'll see the same buildings that we're talking about with the zip lines. Those buildings are a lot of fun to play in, but also this whole area has really just got a lot more cover than before. It's really cool. 
Experimental Labs will continue on with the new buildings, but also look at that loot difference, but also the cover. You're not really running in a whole lot of open fields as before, but also the zip rails and where they go. You see, you heard my voice crack a little bit. Ah, the zip rails, sir, you're going to have to leave the theater, are absolutely crazy and insane. New rotations as well. Across the board, the rotations are smoother and better. These are just examples of being able to rotate. I, I think the map just has less choke points in this upper area. These, these areas are filled with loot. But I don't want to spend too much time in the video. You can check it out full on the blog. I, I think they've done a really good job with Broken. It's a lot of fun. Let me know when you play it tomorrow what your thoughts are on it as well. So my quick summary of how Broken Moon plays is a much improvement. There's a lot more loot. The rotations, there's a lot more options available. The POIs are stronger on the left side of the map. The right side of the map remains more untouched, but still has some changes. And a lot more buildings that are a lot more fun for movement players, as well as ways to traverse and just have some diversity. Kind of brings that extra life to the map. And sometimes in some areas, I'm going to be honest, it feels like a new map from my experience. Now, they, re they released this as well, and I'm not really going to cover it a whole lot. I'll leave this one here for you guys, Apex Artifacts. I'm not sure how I feel about it at all. I prefer heirlooms that had a lot more lore behind them. If you are not a fan of the Cobot Qatar, you are not going to like this. I, I will click on it for a second. But essentially, you have different variants. Now, if you love the Cobot Qatar, having different colors and variants are going to be really exciting for you. I am concerned for pricing, too. Just putting that out there. I am concerned about pricing for that. So that's your bag. You can click on it and you can click on that link and enjoy. But that's just not for me, I guess. <laughs> all right, now patch notes. Let's talk about all these patch notes. And we covered buffs and nerfs, but these are going to be more of the detailed figures. And I'm sure all of you are craving. So the care package, Wingman returns to floor. Its damage reduced to 45, it was 50. The projectile size was also reduced to pre care package values. The Skull Piercer Elite was removed. Keep in mind, Skull Piercer was removed across the board. Hit fire accuracy was reduced and now takes boosted loader hop up. No longer takes magazines as an attachment. So it's been nerfed pretty hard, but the Wingman is still always a fantastic burst weapon. The Devotion enters the care package. So this one is crazy. The damage increased to 16. The magazine size was increased to 54. The reserve ammo, 325. Empty reload time significantly reduced. And reverse hip fire. Sustained hip fire will tighten accuracy instead of widen. That's... Wow. Wow. Yeah. Let's repeat that one again. New reverse hip fire. Sustained hip fire will tighten accuracy instead of widen? Jeez. Like, the devotion was... The... My gosh, it was already crazy before. New, the new gold weapon rotation, Nemesis Burst AR, Triple Take, Peacekeeper, Prowler, and Longbow DMR. Now, guaranteed weapons out of loot bins. The first spin opened by an unarmored player will always contain a weapon. Wow, that's pretty cool. Thank God. You imagine, have you had moments? But this is going to change my strat that I give to people. I always say, go to loot on the ground this was always my tip initially because you're at least you're going to find a gun on the floor sometimes in the bins you can open four five i've even had six bins open where you just don't find a gun but that's actually insane that's really nice breaking knuckles to a gunfight isn't the most engaging gameplay, place so or improving weapon acquisition consistency and early game when completely unarmed this is a big change guys land on bins uh all my notes before about not landing on bins because you never know what you're going to get they just changed they changed the game here fantastic Great. This is a fantastic. I'm going to change how I give my tips in terms of loot patterns even. This is this is great. I love this. Now my question, what about what about the second loot bin? Is it what if what if you don't have a secondary? Well, we'll have to learn from that later. Retrieving banners from death boxes. Collecting a banner no longer locks a player out of critical gameplay actions. So running, shooting, punching, reviving, all break the banner. Collect animation while registering as a successful collection. That's good. Players can immediately interact with the death box a second time while the animation is playing. So in case you're trying to go for the armor swap, right? And this is something we've all kind of asked for because it's like, it's the worst thing ever. Now, there's also the counter argument that I've seen individuals make. Why well, reward a player when their teammates died by giving them an upper hand? I mean, people just want to fight want to play, right? It just makes it a lot more engaging. Nobody wants to be stuck in an animation. So if you are fighting, keep this in mind, because if you got a knock player, they can essentially, well, that is going to be interesting. Hmm. 
let's say like your both your teammates got eliminated instead of having to go through a banner animation you can get an armor swap pretty quick but their notes here it's f happening it's finally happening i've died you've died we've all died to help our allies get back in the fight but at least now we can't blame grabbing the banner collecting banners is a positive action apex and for too long we punished that action with a brief moment of pure helplessness we're putting your gun quite literally back in your hand so you get out there and save some octanes and raves <laughs> that's funny that's actually crazy all right survival items plus support bins Survival items now only spawn from a support bench tray if the team is in need. Let's repeat that because that didn't really sink in. Survival items now only spawn from a support bench tray if the team is in need. Okay, so that really lowers heat shields, evacs, and it kind of buffs the support legends in their own way. Survival items have been feeling abundant lately and reducing their frequency in support bins by only spawning them when players are in need of specific items. Mobile respawn when you've got eliminated teammates. Interesting. Wow. Huh. Well, that's a that's a big nerf. I mean, for people, I mean, I guess it's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. You know, it, does, it does feel like, especially, I guess there's a few things, especially when players use evacs to keep pushing, right? They'll have to think a little bit more besides just, you know, evac towering. We got three of them. Just keep pushing, you know, maybe using mobies for defensive purposes or just having an abundance of heat shields outside of zone. So I guess there is some takeaways there, right? Let me know how you feel about that one. That was, that, I was, I'm kind of surprised about that change. Weapons and attachments, 3030 repeater, skull piercer, hop up, removed. The 3030 has been dominant as a mid range weapon, and so they are trying to dethrone it, it seems like. Remove the skull piercer should create some space for other marksman rifles to shine. The ADS recoil improved and stabilized in the charge rifle. This is still a high risk reward weapon. However, the slight, it slightly outweighs the reward, which they've taken to a pass at the recoil. I honestly don't think that's going to make much of a difference, but because you guys can let me know, that's my opinion. Longbow DMR, the skull pierce to hop up, remove, barrel stabilizer attachment, barrel stabilizer attachment removed. I can speak. Base recoil significantly improved, projectile gravity reduced, ADS in and out time. They are essentially the goal here, and I even had this note, is that they're trying to simplify the loophole for the longbow and give it more effectiveness in the early game. But to kind of give it some balance, essentially, because the skull piercer is gone. Triple take got a little bit of a love here, a little bit of a boost, and no pun intended. Boosted loader hop up is now added just to kind of give it that faster reload time. Hop up, skull piercer removed from loop pool, and the boosted loader has been added. Reloading while near empty. So that's going to be on the triple take, the wingman. One can assume the hemlock because it is not listed here and not mentioned. So we're going to assume the hemlock. I, uh, I'm surprised I don't see a note about it, but I'm going to make that assumption. We'll see on live. Digi threat threat has been removed from the loophole and all lock set weapons. They said that it fe felt like it had. It was a niche is the, the the biggest thing. So we'll read the note here of what they mean by that. It's a power spike, a single loot item that both counters and synergizes with specific legends. <clears throat> Bangalore. It power embeds the flow of the legend meta, and they're giving the one edge digi a hiatus, just to kind of give a little bit up bit of balance but the other digi the uh sniper four to ten is still in the game now legends we covered these as well but we're also going to kind of deep dive into it ash the arc snare we showcase this in the buffs and nerfs they changed to left hand cast so you can shoot do everything you need to and so forth phase breach inspired by some alter tech nearby enemies will be highlighted for players traveling through the void I say it's about time i really think so i think that her ultimate still needs a lot of love maybe reduce the cooldown significantly there just needs to be a lot more with ash here i just feel really bad for ash ballistic the smart bullet damage increased to 10. i still think that the whistler is is could have a lot more love here too i see that they're trying to get the power creep on ballistic by not making ballistic overpowered i know his kit can feel a little in my opinion sometimes a little straightforward maybe a little boring but it can be really strong upgrade so they changed some stuff here Care package insight was removed. They improved with giving you the sling shot improvement, meaning that every time you level up, your weapon that you have in your sling levels up. So the base weapon to blue set is level two and the purple set is at level three. They're replacing some of those perks to give a stronger strength to ballistic. I, I see what they're trying to do without power creeping too much. We'll see if more players play ballistic. All right, ladies and gentlemen, up next, Beast of the Hunt. Cooldown increased to four minutes, was three minutes. So, uh, a nerf. 
essentially. Nox with ultimate active no longer extend duration. So another nerf. But their upgrades have changed here. The tactical cooldown removed. So that perk. They have taste of blood buffed. It was 25, is now 50. And the new one is long hunt. It extends Beast of the Hunt duration. Hmm. So their note here is Beast of the Hunt was, well, it has a lot of power baked into it, considering perfect vision through smoke, increased movement speed, and a generous extension timer. We want to break that down to see players lean into specific play styles and acts an uninteresting hidden power of decreased tactical cooldown. Bloodhound synergizes very well with most legends, you know, kind of Bangalore, you know, there's a lot caustic. We saw it in ALGS, so just kind of adding it there. But we want to be mindful of their appeal across skill bands. We're not doing anything big to make this approach of a legend until we gauge their place at the top end in a digi free world. So because digital threat is gone, maybe everyone would have run more to Bloodhound. We'll see. We'll see. So these are the things that were removed that it's not removed. This one just got buffed and this one changed. Catalyst. While there is some insane changes to their kit, we need to cover some of them here. Piercing spikes, cooldown decreased to 20 seconds, was 25. Long cast upgrade integrated into base tactical. Dark Veil length increased to 45 meters, was 40. So a little love back there. Uh, upgrades, long cast removed. Long Veil moved to level two. New Pharaoh Door fully rebuild and reinforce missing doors with passive. That's, I still think that's insane. I still think it's insane. Catalyst could use some love after her ult nerfs and sister spikes needed some com competition. Hopefully making some tact charges more available with baseline cooldown buff and creating situationally stronger alternative via passive upgrades help strikes a balance. Now that the ult upgrades are decoupled, there are some difficult choices. I do agree that there's better difficult choices. I really think everyone's going to go for the door one though. The door one is just, it's insane, especially if alters there to play. You kind of want the door one. Let me know. I, I've been seeing a lot of comments about this. Caustic. God, there's a lot of changes. It's going to be a longer video. Wow. Caustic. Gas damage and slows now stop immediately after squad is eliminated. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> gas damage ramps up from 4 to 10 max was uncapped. So a nerf here. Damage will knock players down to a flat 4 was 5. A bit of a nerf. But yeah, just a nerf. Okay. Conduit. Radiant transfer can no longer target a revenant while Forge Shadows is active. Good change. Good nerf on that synergy. That synergy was wacky. When Revenant activates Forge Shadows, any temporary shield generated ends immediately. Revenant will keep any. Uh, yeah, you just gotta you gotta nerf nerf the, that effective health pool. It was insane. Upgrades. So the battery collection was removed to a stack three batteries, but the downside is that it doesn't stack with a gold bag. Had that comment a lot. I forgot to test it. My bad. I apologize. I'm not a perfect person by any means. And there's a as you can tell, this is a lot of changes, guys. I am. Wow, I, I didn't realize when we really read it out, this is a lot. Okay, Conduit mains a healthy pick rate and cement herself as a strong support even after a, her last round of nerfs. They don't want to hit her effectiveness as a legend, but that pushes the tempo in combat. This is a targeted nerf for synergy. Makes sense. Crypto. I know Crypto needs a lot more love. Let's be honest. I, I sleep on crypto. A lot of people sleep on crypto. Crypto is a sleeper legend that if you put a lot of time into, can be really, really effective and really strong. Now, the people that can do that is only a handful. Comment down below if you're that handful of cryptos that is an absolute legend and beast. Neuralink. Network traffic upgrade now integrated into base kit. Squad count banners are now visible anytime the drone is in a deployed state. Upgrades. Level 2. Tact and ultimate cooldowns. That was removed. Network expansion moved to level 2. New quick ping. Improved drone handling. Faster acceleration slash the acceleration. Now, upgrades level 3. New satellite imagery. Drone scans persist for an additional 1.5 seconds. New hackathon. Cut the drone cooldown in half. Gain a speed boost anytime he uses his ult or the drone is destroyed. Dev note. Crypto's upgrades at the start of season 20 left a lot to be desired. I agree. I mean, the ultimate expansion was cool, but con. I hope this suite of changes resonates with a couple of different playstyles. I was about to say, <laughs> I was about to laugh and say a couple players. I was like, what? No, okay. Particularly when it comes to players' affinity to pilot the drone more actively versus passively. I hope that, I still, my personal thing is give Crypto more of a speed boost in some way, shape, or form. But that would be my own my own internal thoughts. So let me know, Crypto mains, how you guys feel. You guys deserve more love. Let's just put that out there. All right, up next is Fuse. They've made some really strong changes. Now a fuse can hit ring consoles. It's insane. That's that's crazy. Now scar tissue. 
Simplified and buff damage mitigation to remove lingering burn effects. Take a flat 20 damage when crossing the mother load instead of 37, 50% of 75 over time. Okay. Reckless, fixed explosive damage mitigation not being applied on continuous knuckle cluster hits. Should only take about 32 damage from a full knuckle cluster now with Reckless. Okay. Dev note, Fuse is destruction and chaos. The goal of these changes, whether to a new strategic level upgrade or simplification of a convoluted damage model, is to bring some method to the madness. It's interesting that he's going to be the only assault that gain access to ring console. I find that fascinating. This one is crazy, and we showcase this in the buffs and nerfs video. Newcastle, mobile shield, throw animation speed has been sped up by 2.5. 2.5 faster. That's insane. That is crazy. Castle wall will now destroy incoming projectiles headed towards the front of the wall while energized. It will not destroy projectiles fired from behind the wall, nor bombardments from legend ultimate projectiles. Fair. It looked like it would have, to be fair, to be honest. And I didn't have anybody else to test from the range. So I apologize for that misinformation. That's my bad. Castle wall energized duration increased to one minute was 30 seconds. Solid buff. Upgrade stronghold increased energized duration to three minutes was 2.5. Wow. I mean, this is just insane. This gives, no matter which way you slice this, this steps on Watson's toes. Even though it doesn't block the ultimate projectiles, come on, it blocks grenades. It's crazy. This is insane. This is an insane change. I, the new castle, if you made new castle, congrats. This, this is a really positive change. This is good. Octane kind of got, you know, that, that nerf, you know, you kind of have to choose between choosing between jump pad and removing stem. They essentially, the 25% was nerfed by only, I mean, you could select both of them, but it does kind of dull in my opinion, octane which really sucks. Octane has a plus ultra tattoo, so shouldn't inhibit his ability to double down on his attack or ultimate. While Reckless was thematically fun, Octane already has one of the best forms of explosive damage mitigation that's less hidden stim away. Fair. Still, this is a nerf. Upgrades, Watson, Falling Stars Pile will stop spawning Arc Stars when her squad is eliminated. Okay, that's, a, that's, that's fine. Split Circuit no longer reduces shield regen capacity. Okay, I mean, Watson's were our buffs. Where are they? <laughs> Wraith, into the void and dimensional rift. Nearby enemies will be highlighted for players traveling through the void. Okay. So remember the map changes. Broken Moon, we won't really kind of repeat it since we've already covered it as well as showed it. But also add a new possible ring console survey beacon, crafter spawn locations in World's Edge, Storm Point, and further even doubt the probability of prop spawning at any specific location. So they've changed some of this stuff across the board on other maps, specifically World's Edge and Storm Point. We're not really going to see the Storm Point changes probably for a little bit because it's not part of the map rotation, but just, I guess, highlighting it here. Now, the new mode, solo, six-week duo takeover. This means that duos is, is gone. Now, solos mode, like we said, we're going to cover. We've already covered in a video, but just a reminder, kind of verbal. 50 players, you get a second respawn. You automatically respawn once you die in the first four rounds. Now... The second chance gets converted into 1000 EVO by the round cutoff. Battle sense HUD indicates when the enemies are within 50 meters. You auto heal and it doesn't have the, the timer here. It's six seconds when out of combat. Now, every time you take damage, it resets that six seconds and you auto heal starts after each kill. That one's interesting. And I didn't know that additional adjustments to loop pull circle sizes and round times to accommodate solo play. Now, Mixtape, they have a lot of map changes to avoid. Well, this is already a long video, but these are the map rotations going across the board. This is a lot. So they are making a lot of pretty big changes here. Rank doesn't have a whole lot of changes, okay? I'm just going to be honest. From what I've seen, all pre-made squads need to be within a three rank tier. You know, no tuning changes. If you ended your season in Rookie, you'll be reset to one RP. If you ended your last season above a rookie, you'll be reset to bronze four. I don't know how I feel about that, but I don't, I don't, I don't know if we need like a full on reset, but I, I guess, sure. I was hoping that it was kind of keep it two tiers, but I, I mean, eh, it's fine. Split timing. Split two will take place at the same time as the point one patch, not a week after like the previous seasons. Okay. Uh, upheaval rank rewards. Your end of season rewards will now be determined by the highest rank you achieved during the entire season. Split rewards. Your end season badge will be animated if you match or surpass your split one rank and split two. If you do not achieve this, you get the normal version of your badge. So that's still, I think, the same. World's Edge improve end ring generation system. Now the bug fixes here. Let's see if there's anything big. 
Equipping an evac tower or mobile respawn beacon will no longer close the inventories of all other players in the match. I had no idea that was a thing. Uh, a fire range fixed some edges where legend change was available when it shouldn't be. Okay. Uh, fix occasional crash when interacting with enemies crafted banner. I didn't know that one either. Mischief medic no longer appears as highlighted healer. Olympus players can no longer exit or enter the vault without the key. Survey beacons and ring console should now be pingable again. I did notice that one. When hip firing with the devotion not properly track, it's reticle. Okay. Legends. Du uh, ballistic duration of speedy whistler restored to two seconds. I didn't know that was a bug. Passive marker no longer appear for teammates on the squad. Players can once again be scanned by two bloodhounds at the same time. Wow, I didn't know that was a problem. Catalyst fix a dark veil not charging for a short duration off spawn. Crypto recall audio when the drone is far away from you is audible once again. Maggie remove drill burn audio for players in area effect while phase. Removed shadow, wraith shadows from the void if you aren't playing as wraith. Watson res resolved bad spawn points for arc star generation. That's good. And quality of life here is really additional security improvements. You can requeue at the end of pubs, BR, and mix tape matches. Ballistic now added. I uh, don't really see anything big. Upgrade the latest version of Easy Anti Cheat. I hope that does something. Please. Please. <laughs> you know, right? Should now go through all translucent surfaces. That's the, the ping. Players can now request grenades, Thunderdome, airdrop location adjustments, control. They made some changes. Oh, across the board. Oh, found Blue Nessie too. We'll end on the Blue Nessie here. I might use it as says the uh, patch notes. Let's go. Uh, thumbnail. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I know this is a little longer. I apologize. There was a lot to cover here. Everything is now down in the link down in the description down below. I'll be sure to timestamp everything best I can. Uh, hopefully you're excited for the new season I am as well. Sorry if my voice was a little tired. You know, it's it's taken a little while as we're doing the video to kind of warm up. I think we're pretty much good to go. I'm excited. Apex Legends Global Series was great. I'm excited to play a lot of Alter. We'll, we'll aim to do a master guide for her. We got a lot of content planned, so this is going to be a whole lot of fun. And we'll hopefully the cheater situation kind of, you know, instability of servers gets knocked down, you know. Server stability stable, cheaters knock them out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys all in the next one.